All right, today we're gonna to talk about reasons why you should not make biodiesel. I'm gonna talk about five reasons why you shouldn't do it. Don't make biodiesel, not a good idea. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the five reasons uh, why you shouldn't make biodiesel. And then I'm gonna upload a follow-up video, a part two of this video, and we're actually gonna make some biodiesel. We're gonna do a 100 liter batch of biodiesel production right from source canola oil. Uh, we're gonna process it all the way through to a finished product that we'll, we'll put in the car and burn it. So I'm gonna show that. So this will be a two-part video. You'll wanna subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff YouTube people say. And, uh, and you'll get a notification that way. Hit the bell and you'll get a notification when the follow-up video about making the 100 liter batch goes live. There are some other videos I've done that you might wanna look at. Uh, you can see those in my channel. Take a look. But uh, with fuel prices doing what they're doing right now, there's a lot of interest in, in biodiesel production. And I thought I'd do a follow-up video. So first, uh, five reasons why you shouldn't do it. Let's start with that. Let's start with why not to do it. Um, the first reason is you're gonna make a big mess, right? This can be a very messy process. Um, if one of these valves gets accidentally knocked or left open, or God forbid something fails, one of the seals or one of these uh, fittings cracks or something, you could have 100 liters of biodiesel or vegetable oil or whatever all over your shop floor. Now this is an epoxy floor here, not a big deal. Uh, clean up relatively, but you could imagine, you know, you could imagine if it went on a concrete floor and starts soaking into the concrete, you're gonna make a big mess. And it will happen. At some point you will spill oil, even if you just knock one of these over. Um, or don't have a bucket lined up correctly underneath a, one of the drains if you're trying to process some oil, you're gonna make a mess. So don't make biodiesel because you're gonna make a mess of your garage. Uh, second reason would be, so reason number two not to make biodiesel. Um, it's difficult sometimes to get the materials that you need. Uh, not just the oil, which if you're gonna make biodiesel, you're not gonna use new oil because it's very expensive you're going to go to a restaurant, maybe a local restaurant. I've in the past um, got oil in these big jugs, used oil from a pub that's near, the, near my house. Um, it's a pub that changes their oil quite frequently and the, and the oil is quite high quality. It's not dirty. Um, if you can convince a local restaurant to put their used oil back in the containers it came with and set it out for you, that might be the, the way to go. Um, so you'll have to have a relationship with somebody local who will do that for you. Um, but, you know, getting the oil is hard enough, but it's not just the oil. You need things like catalysts, like this is potassium hydroxide flake. Right? This is a, I think it's 91% or 93% pure potassium hydroxide flake. And you can get that. It's it might be tough to get it. You can, I bought this at a chemical company. But depending on what state you're in, or what province or where you are in the world, you might not be able to buy this. There might be different rules. You might have to have a license. You might, who knows? Materials are sometimes hard to get. Methanol as well. You can buy methanol or methyl alcohol um, down at the hardware store at Home Depot or whatever, but it's expensive. Yeah, really the only economic way to buy it is in big, uh, like 55 gallon drums from a chemical supplier. But again, a lot of chemical suppliers won't sell those to a retail customer. You know, you might have to have a company or something like that. So, so just getting the materials that you need to do this is difficult sometimes. So that's reason number two why you shouldn't make biodiesel. It's tough to get the stuff to make it. Not impossible, but it's, it's tough. Uh, the third reason would be uh, you might make the government mad, right? You're supposed to pay road taxes on fuel that you purchase at the, um, at the gas station. And if you're making your own, you're, you're kind of going around that road tax system. So there may be rules, different state, federal rules where you are, um, but be aware that if you're running biodiesel, you may make the government mad. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, the fourth reason would be fire. Well, this stuff's flammable, like methanol and even you know vegetable oil, if it, if, it, if it lights finished biodiesel, it's not as flammable as gasoline, but but methanol is, you know, so there's a real chance that if you start processing this stuff and adding heat to methanol and things like this, that 
you know, you could you could cause a fire. So that's maybe one of the biggest reasons, and, and probably your local fire codes don't allow you to make it. I, I don't know about everywhere, but there's uh, there's a real fire risk. So that's the fourth reason why you shouldn't make biodiesel. Don't do it. Fifth reason is uh, you might wreck your car, right? Especially as uh, the older diesels that seem to run well on biodiesel, like I run biodiesel in a 2003 Volkswagen Jetta, and I'll, I'll put a picture of it up, uh, with a fairly modern diesel still, but still an old school, you know, not, uh, not a common rail diesel, not a high pressure diesel, it still is quite forgiving and it, it runs really well on biodiesel. And I usually blend it with petroleum diesel anyway, I usually do about a 50-50 mix. Um, which I think reduces the risk of, um, if you had a bad batch of biodiesel or something, if it's blended 50-50 with petroleum diesel, the car's probably not gonna mind. You'll probably get through the tank without, uh, without too much trouble. But on a newer vehicle, common rail diesels or um, you know, these high pressure diesels, uh, you probably don't wanna use biodiesel and you're probably gonna avoid warranties if it's still under warranty, et cetera. I know there are some vehicles, like I think Ford's uh, power, their 6.7 power stroke, it says B20, you know, nice little green symbol on the side of the truck saying you can use up to 20% blend of biodiesel. Um, I don't know how sensitive those things are to to fuel quality, whether it has to be like a commercially produced um, biodiesel and whether something like what I'm making, whether that, whether that would be good enough for whatever, but be aware if you're making your own fuel and putting it in your car tank, especially as vehicles get more sophisticated, um, you might wreck your car. So that's the fifth reason why you shouldn't ever use biodiesel. Okay, that's the five reasons. Um, that's the first part of this video. Like I said, subscribe and uh, hit the bell and you'll get a notification when I upload the follow-up video, which is the pro one you probably really want to watch, which is where we actually go through the process of turning. Whoa, I changed. Sorry, that video got cut off. I was saying that We'll go through the process in the next video, which you'll see because you're gonna subscribe, where we take used canola oil, in this case, this stuff looks pretty clean. And we got some dirtier stuff here. We're gonna take some used canola oil and we're actually gonna process it through the whole process into finished biodiesel, which in theory, one could put into a appropriate diesel car and run it. So we're gonna go through that whole process. We're gonna make a 100 liter batch. So watch for that video. It will be coming up, I promise. And uh, we'll see you in that video. Thanks.